I might actually made a few additions to the int very kind introduction. So um, I'm one of those persons that actually combine uh, business with academia and then working for the public sector at the same time. I also work as a venture capitalist. And here in Barcelona at the Smart World uh, or Smart City World Expo, actually there is a very big stand by the future internet public-private partnership that I chair, uh, which is a, an EU program of 150 uh, partners and 600 million euro budget. And what it is that we have actually generated within that program is something that I will tell you during my presentation here today. And at the same time, to tell you that even if that this is a European Union funded project with private sector participants that makes it a public-private partnership, uh, there is a, uh, an angle there that makes it different very different from anything that you have heard from the European Commission or from the EU. And it is that it's not a technology push program, but it's intended to really generate growth among companies, uh, to create new jobs, real jobs, not just political rhetoric, and at the same time to really be based on demand. And when we talk about smart cities, that uh, Demand obviously comes from the people that I've been hearing today here. Uh, the type of things that how to make you not only the users of technology, but really make certain that the services that are based on the digital technologies make sense. So that they're based on real demand. They really not only help to automize or make things more efficient, but they actually are able to generate new growth within cities, whether you talk about revenues or jobs or, or those type of things. So that is what, I, what I'm really involved with. So the, the idea there is that when you think about, think about the traditional EU programs or when you think about the traditional things uh, from the private sector point of view, the incubation of new businesses or the venture capital industry looking for the new startups that will generate new growth and new uh, revenue. The thing is that we link those two together in the EU program called the Future Internet Public-Private Partnership. And what we have generated here is that it caters technologies, new companies, new ideas and innovation to smart cities, yes, but also to Internet of Things, to smart manufacturing, to smart logistics, to all new verticals uh, that are in dire need for better solutions that are enabled by digital technologies. So we're not only doing smart cities, but we're actually doing a very broad platform of different services and different sectors, whether from the traditional industries to the services such as uh, sharing uh, cars or automobiles of those, so anything in between. So we're very open, we're very technology agnostic in a sense. All the technologies that we have generated within the future internet public-private partnership are open source. And we have traditional companies backing the EU program. So there are companies such as Telefonica from here, from Spain. Uh, we have companies, especially large companies from uh, Germany, Siemens. Uh, then we have Bosch. We have Atos from France and all these large companies have actually, when they joined the public-private partnership, signed a collaboration agreement that everything that comes out of the program is indeed open source. And the idea there is that it will enable, obviously, to build a bigger market and to speed up the transition to new digital services and smarter solutions instead of doing things in siloed and being unable to speed up the market transition as such. And there is a new role for the government. When you think about from the European Commission, the European Commission has traditionally, as, as I've said, financed and giving funds to R&D uh, programs that have generated something like the GSM mobile standard, for instance. But in this case, they're taking a very dynamic 
operational role, actually helping not only the diffusion of the technologies and the new services, but are really creating new companies based on our program. And that is done in two novel ways. So today, for instance, I've, I've been very happy to hear the presentations today about the incubation of new businesses and about the acceleration of new business ideas, and especially the small and medium-sized enterprises within your cities and within your regions. That is exactly what we are aiming to do as well. So we have generated a network of 16 accelerators throughout Europe. And those accelerators provide not only a physical hub for the companies to come together and innovate and have new type of an ideas and actually look for those networking assets that we were discussing today. But at the same time, they generate a, uh, a model where all the red tape has been taken away. So instead of these SMEs from Barcelona, for instance, or other places, uh, traditionally going into EU programs would have meant that they would have done all the written reports and all the cross marks and then dot the I's for, for the Brussels, but in this case, they are not in the reporting responsibility to Brussels at all. They're basically doing everything in the same language that the business people and the business leaders like to hear through the accelerators. And the accelerators are actually the ones that are doing all the <coughs> necessary official reporting for, uh, for, the, uh, for the European Commission. And that has generated results. So traditionally, if I were here and talk about that here is Brussels, we are trying to help the SMEs. Uh, it's very much about political rhetoric. But in this case, we have done it in a concrete way. We have actually <coughs> enabled 9,000 SMEs throughout Europe to become part of our program. Some are joining the program by being members of the technology development and using the technology, which is called Fiware, for uh, uh, the setting up their, their own businesses and their services and building on top of the Fiware platform. Then there are companies that are joining our program for the reason that they get into that network that we were discussing today, so that when you, when you saw the map, the network map, we are there, one of those big bubbles where we actually provide business development help, we provide the access to capital, we provide the access to technology, we provide those things that the new uh, companies, and especially not only startups, but, and this, but the scale-ups actually need as well. So we will pro provide the tools for growth for those companies in real sense. And that is generating already jobs. And by 2020, there is a projection that says that for the 80 million that we have now invested in this phase three of the program to help the companies to grow, we are about to gain about 300 million in return. So it makes sense from the European Commission to be engaged in programs that do go beyond the policy recommendations and do go beyond the, uh, the regular work that you would expect from uh, a big organization as such. And I was very happy to hear about the World Bank efforts because you, you are following on the same path. So for instance, the activities that are being uh, made now in South America are exactly the same thing. You need to go there, you need to go there in the market, you need to discuss with those people and help them from the ground up, from the bottom up way to really grow their businesses and, and to be able to come up with an ideas. And ideas matter in this case because for the large companies to commit to open source technologies, it's a totally novel thing. When you think of the large telcos, you think about the big IT vendors that are now part of this uh, future internet PPP. Traditionally, they have done very much proprietary systems, proprietary solutions. Already for the smart cities also, they have provided cities like Barcelona with proprietary systems that are usually very, uh, sometimes even too big for the cities. I, I would say that they cost a lot of money and that they are not 
always worth all that money that is being uh, kind of invested in there. But in this case, creating an open source platform for cities, notwithstanding whether they're large cities or big, uh, smaller cities, you get the same holistic, uniform, harmonized IT foundation, which is called Fiverr, on top of which you can actually build your own services that can be customized based on your existing IT architecture and legacy. So instead of building everything from the ground up new and discarding the old system, you can actually take the existing IT architecture that you have and combine that with the fiber technologies to, uh, to help to make the system to work together. There is a very big stand of ours at the, uh, the, the expo uh, next uh, tomorrow when you go in there. I would really advise you to go to the Fiverr stand and talk to the experts that also speak Spanish uh, to be able to get the more details and more to the bottom of the story that what Fiverr is about. So I mentioned that we are there in the market, creating and shaping the market creating demand, being able to cater for various sectors, smart cities being one of those. But how do you do it in, in the actual way that you are really able to shape the market? You have to work together with the cities. So instead of us as technology vendors, as private sector companies, going to the market with the marketing slogan and saying that here is our new solution, buy it because it will make you the greatest city on earth if you really buy it. That's the traditional way. In our case, we are working in an opposite model. Sometimes it feels easy when you think about the digital principles that we uh, saw this morning in the very first presentation, that you should go and listen to the customer, you should go to the user, you should be able to uh, commit to principles of openness and these type of things. In usual way, I, I was in the ICT industry for a better part of uh, 12 years. And prior to that, I was in academia for 10 years, uh, being an expert on the international political economy and also on regional economies and the private sector views on how development actually materializes. And in all of those positions that I have and all that experience that I know, it's not that easy to discuss so the cities speak a different language, the IT vendors speak a very totally different language, and for those two to come together and come up with a joint vocabulary and understanding that what it is that you try to do is very, very difficult. It's not as easy as it sounds. And for the PPP to succeed, you need to have a common terminology, you need to have a common understanding, and you need to have the legal basis there so that everyone is committed to do the same thing, the uniform thing, and really create something of value that can be added value for the companies in terms of revenue and can be added value for the smart cities in terms of greater efficiency in traffic management or giving more uh, participatory tools for the citizens living in those cities. And they can meet each other. But sometimes creating that type of a language that shares both ends so making money and being for the public good is something that you really have to strive for and you really have to struggle uh, to make it work. And for that purpose, we have created, and now coming back to the introduction, we have created something called the Open and Agile uh, Smart Cities Initiative. And what makes it great is that it not only brings together the cities, but it also brings together the companies to learn and to listen to the cities and to really understand that what it is that big vendors such as Telefonica or Siemens or others and those can really do to help the cities to grow, uh, to create more jobs and to create more revenue. This may sound like a, a policy rhetoric, but it, I've seen it work and, and it's working in, in, in a good way. Uh, we, we launched the the initiative in March this year, only this year, but with the signatory parties of 31 cities coming together globally, not only in Europe. 
and by o- end of October, we now have 61 cities working to utilize our open source technologies to set up a harmonized platform for their smart city services. There are Spanish cities also involved in this, and you can get all the, all the information from uh, the, uh, the Fiverr stand at the Smart City World Expo. So the idea there is that working together, the private sector companies and the cities, we are indeed generating something that makes it the cities smarter buyers when you deal with the IT vendors. You are able to talk to the same language. You are able to actually make better purchases from the IT vendors and really do in a way that it's saving money. But at the same time, you get the most advanced and update technologies for your specific use. This is something that may sound uh, self-evident, but trust me, it's not. When I work for the Finland Chamber of Commerce as their chief economist and as a head of the Finnish digitalization uh, campaign, which basically helps the SMEs to grow, this is by far the single biggest obstacle that there is. How to make companies also, not only cities, smarter buyers of technology, to really understand what it is that you aim to do with the technology instead of just buying new pieces of technology and thinking about that it will change things automatically. Never happens. There are a lot of two different legacies. There are a lot of things that are vested interests. There are a lot of things that actually don't enable that such a type of a transformation, whether in the public sector or in the private sector. And in this case, by working together with the smart cities, in the Open Agile uh, Smart City Alliance, we are changing the game, the rules of the game, transforming the relationship that you have with the IT vendors and what you have with the public sector cities. It has not been done before. And you can see the results in, in, in our work. So to end my presentation without slides, the benefits, I mentioned about that from the EU, from the European Commission point of view, you generate new companies, you enable scale-ups to grow, you enable them to create those jobs that every politician would like to have. So not only that you're thinking about uh, the low-skilled jobs in the service sector, but you're really thinking about jobs that will actually keep the European industries more competitive for long term. So we're doing that. For the companies, as I said, we are creating a bigger pie so that the incentive for them is that you can actually make more money in the end, but you can make that money globally based on a European comparative advantage of understanding that what it is that smart cities are about. And now I'm going to disclose something that will be announced this week. Our Fiverr platform was selected uh, two weeks ago by the U.S. government to be a platform for American cities. There are not too many times when you have a European platform that is being instituted and scaled for the U.S. market for for the U.S. cities. This is something that we're really generating in the sense that we are of European origin, but we aim for the global market. And together with that international aspect on going to the U.S. and and doing really a transatlantic business, we are already present in many countries in Latin America, in Mexico, in Brazil, in Chile, and in all of those we are generating together with the local government and the local national objectives new startups, new companies, new ideas, new ways of doing things. So this is, this is what, what we're doing in the internationally. And that is good for the big companies, and that is good for the business side, creating a globally scalable market for a smart city platform that can really be utilized, no matter if that city is in Europe or in the US or in Asia or in Latin America. So we're taking away that siloed and approach and, and really working on a new basis. Then when you think about the city benefits, 
Traditionally, an IT vendor comes to you and says, I need to stop. So I'll, I'll just say the, the city benefits, and then I stop. Traditionally comes here and says that you, when you're using my technology, it will make your traffic management more efficient. It will create new productivity enhancements, especially in the, in the governance side of your, your cities in the city administration. And at the same time, then you are able somehow magically or, or whatever it is uh, to really generate a lot of added value for the city. But in our case, we didn't want to go that traditional road. So through this alliance that we created together with the cities, you're actually creating a single point of entry for all the different programs that there ex exist within the public sector towards the government, the central government, and the national governments and those, so that it makes it easier to, uh, to uh, communicate there. It creates a single point for investments from big companies to uh, smaller companies within those cities. It makes it sense, it makes the business case global and scalable instead of a piloted one city at the time approach. And it creates new research infrastructure and new competitive skills within your city environment through the nodes that you will establish on, on fiber technologies and spread out and diffuse with the companies. And lastly, and then I let the next speaker, it is open source in a true way. So it's all about open data, about openness, about transparency, about all of those things. And done in a way that, for instance, a startup coming in using fiber technology for smart city applications, it, the startup company, will own the IPR, not the big companies that have been providing a lot of the software for the fiber platform. I'll, I'll end in there and let the next speaker to come on board. And many thanks for uh, having me here, and it's been a great pleasure to listen to the earlier presentations. Thank you.